Hello there, internet person. I'd like to show you how to make high-quality local recordings of games using OBS, and what kind of performance and quality you can expect from this. And the reason for doing this is because I suspect there's some people out there that haven't actually considered using what is typically live streaming software for local recordings. But as it turns out, it's actually very good at them. And I'm also going to have some comparisons to Fraps, another kind of recording software often used for recording games, which I actually used to use before switching over to OBS. And I've been a lot happier ever since I switched. So hopefully if you're on the fence about what kind of recording software to use, or maybe if you currently use Fraps, hopefully you'll find this information also useful. So, first thing to do is get your settings set right. So there's actually a section on the website specifically for how to make, well, high-quality local recordings. I'll have a link to this in the description. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just set all these settings to what it says. And that gets you most of the way there. So a couple other things I would set as well. Let me drag my OBS window over here. I know there's a bit of a windowception thing going on, but try to ignore it. Okay, go to your settings. And go to broadcast settings. And of course, make sure that your mode is set to file output only. Since if you're making a local recording, you obviously do not want to live stream it. And I would also go to advanced and set your CPU preset from the default of very fast down to ultra fast. And what that's going to do is reduce the quality of your recording. However, it's also going to drastically reduce your CPU usage. Which, if you were live streaming, would be a pretty big deal. It would drastically reduce your quality as well. But, because we're throwing so much bitrate at this, at this encoding, because we're making a local recording, the actual quality effect upon your footage, by setting this to ultra-fast, is actually not very high. So, with all of those things set, everything from here, as well as the local recording mode and the CPU preset, let's move into what kind of performance you can expect. Okay, so I'm inside of The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which is going to be my stress test for performance. And as you can see, the task manager is in the top right with OBS highlighted, so you can see its CPU usage. But before I get to actually testing it, let me just quickly mention that I'm recording at 1080p, 30fps, and my CPU is a 4770k. Okay. So as you can see, as I'm just idle here, CPU usage is about 7, 8%, 7, 7, still 7, okay. So yeah, somewhere between like 6 and 8. Now, the amount of CPU usage depends on the complexity of uh, how complex it is to render the scene. So the more movement, the more complex it is. So I'm going to stress it out as much as possible. This is going to be like a worst case scenario for encoding. And to do that, I'm going to make everybody motion sick. Yes, I know, it's, it's, it's not fun to look at. But as you can see, the CPU usage is going up to about 9, 10%. 9%, 10%, 11%. And then once again, if we stop and like open up the menu so everything's still, it goes back down to like 6, 5%, 6%. So yeah, you can see the average is around like 6 to 8%. And then if you really stress it out, it gets up to about 10%. Okay, and here's the same performance test with Fraps. As you can see, while I'm just kind of fairly idle here, fairly low motion, it's at about 7% CPU usage. 6%, 7%. Yeah, pretty close. Let's do... Let's go crazy again. It's up to 9%, 8%, 9%. 7%, 8%, 9 I saw I get up to 10 at one point. Oh, come on. There we go. 10. 11. Back down to 10. And back down to 9. Yeah. So, as you can see, the CPU usage between OBS, with the settings I mentioned before, and... Fraps, also recording at 1080p, 30fps, is almost identical. The average CPU usage when just kind of staring any direction in this game is about 7-8%, and during high movement it's about 10-11%. to Okay, now let's talk about quality. So regardless of your compression settings, if you're staring at a fairly still scene, it's probably going to look pretty good. So once again, just like the performance test, to kind of get the worst case scenario, I'm going to move my view around like crazy. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this for both OBS and Fraps. And I know it's going to look completely terrible once it's compressed by YouTube. However, I'm going to extract some still images and display them for comparison. Okay, here are two screenshots extracted from the footage of me moving my camera around like crazy in both Fraps and in OBS. 
So again, this is the worst case scenario. This is the worst your footage could ever possibly look. And frankly, your footage would, would typically look a lot better than this because you don't usually move your camera around like I was doing. Okay, so this one is Fraps. As you can see, it is basically uncompressed. It is technically compressed, but it's really, really good looking. Like, I can't tell any compression whatsoever. Now, here's the one in OBS. This is the absolute worst case scenario. This is the very worst looking part of the image. So as you can see, what used to be a little vague bit of a, a shrub here that you can see. And OBS turns into kind of just a, a blob. Here's how these screenshots look when zoomed in to 100%. This is the Fraps one. I'm trying to avoid moving the image for a while so that hopefully it overcomes YouTube's terrible compression. And then here is the OBS one. Slightly different angle, of course, but as you can see, once again, the worst spot is over here where I zoomed in before, but everything else actually looks really good. You can tell there's a little bit of compression here, kind of around the darker patches of the grass. But it's very good looking. And if we actually zoom into this, compare the two. Yeah, so there's OBS. You can see there's some detail lost around the darker patches of the grass. Here's Fraps, which really has no detail lost whatsoever. So Fraps is indeed better quality. However, OBS is pretty damn good. And again, this is a worst case scenario. This is as bad as your footage could ever possibly look. And this is also during an extremely high motion scene. This is just one, one frame from a view that is spinning around like crazy. So when you see it in motion, you're really not going to notice these minor compression artifacts. And also keep in mind, additionally, that once you compress your footage and send it off to YouTube or wherever you intend to put it, it's going to recompress again. In fact, it's going to recompress twice. You're going to compress this footage and then if you're uploading it to YouTube, YouTube is going to compress it. So these minor artifacts are really, at the end, going to become unnoticeable. Now let's take a look at what kind of file sizes you can expect. To test this, I've made four separate recordings, each one about a minute in length, and all of them set within the vanishing of Ethan Carter. The first one is with OBS, and it's a minute of completely still footage. So I'm just in the menu, not moving a single thing. Next one's with OBS, but this one is high movement, so it's the same sort of thing as the quality and performance tests, where I'm just moving my mouse around like crazy. And then I did the same things in Fraps. So as you can see, the file size differences are vast. The minute of footage of complete, of a completely still scene in OBS is 16 megabytes. Very, very small. The same thing in Fraps is 2.3 gigabytes. I just want to say that again because it still amazes me. A minute of footage in Fraps of a completely still scene, just a, a single image, is 2.3 gigabytes. I really can't believe it's so big. And then a minute of high movement footage in OBS is about 611 megabytes. And the same thing in Fraps is about 2.5 gigabytes. So yes, some massive, massive file size differences. Now let's talk about some sort of miscellaneous topics. And the first one is the adaptability and reliability of OBS. And by this I basically mean, can you be confident that OBS will be able to record what you want it to record, and that it will record it correctly? And the answer to this is definitely yes. So let's take a look at the actual OBS software itself. As you can see here, I'm actually recording myself recording, which is recording myself recording recording. Yeah, it's kind of Inception, but... uh Try not to lose your mind staring into the void. And keep in mind the software is used for live streaming. And if you've seen live streams, I'm sure you've seen some pretty crazy stuff going on. All sorts of overlays and, you know, chat overlays, other overlays, uh, videos, like webcams with the background chroma keyed out, and all sorts of stuff. Maybe scrolling text. And, uh, yeah, you can be pretty confident that pretty much anything you could possibly want to record, you can. So you have various scenes that you can choose from, which are just kind of collections of sources. So right now my monitor scene is just a monitor capture, which is how I'm recording this right now. But you can add all sorts of different sources. So if you want to capture a game, the best way is probably game capture, if you can get this to work. It's sort of just like Fraps, where it kind of hooks directly into the game. 
But if that doesn't work, then you could try monitor uh, window capture. Could capture its window. Which probably won't work if it's full screen, but if it's windowed, or maybe if it's full screen windowed, it might. But yeah, you, got, you have that backup. And if all of those fail, you could always do monitor capture, and just capture the entire monitor. And of course you can add in images, slideshows, text, video capture devices. So you can be pretty damn confident that if you want to record something, you can. And of course you can mess with it in various ways. You can layer these and have text on top of other things, on top of images, and you can resize them and move them and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, very adaptable and very reliable. And another, another great thing about it, by the way, is this very window here itself. This preview window. It's super nice to be able to see and to have that guarantee that, okay, I think I'm recording this and I think it's recording correctly, but, you know, how do you know? Well, with OBS, you have a preview window, which shows you what you are actually recording. So if you want to be confident that what OBS sees is what you see, well, just look at the preview. Like, yeah, that looks fine. Great. Everything's good. And you might ask, why would that be a problem? Well, to use Fraps as an example, um, I have actually had some cases where what Fraps captures in its video is not what I saw on screen. So, for example, I was playing one small little game, um, I think it was made in, like, Game Maker Studio or something, and it was a sort of pixel art game. And what I saw was, of course, just, the you know, the pixel art, it was full screen and everything. And the recording appeared to be normal. But... After recording it, I actually looked at the recording that Fraps had made, and Fraps was not actually capturing the whole full-screen thing. What it was actually capturing was like a little postage stamp, which seemed to be the game before it was upscaled to be pixely. So I think what was happening is that the game was being rendered to a very small resolution, and then it was upscaling the whole thing to full-screen, using like nearest neighbor sampling or something like that so that it looks pixel arty. But what Fraps was actually capturing was the original thing before being upscaled. So Fraps was recording a postage stamp, whereas I was seeing a full screen thing. And there's no way for me to know that unless I actually make the recording and check it and see if it's correct. But with OBS, you can see exactly what it, what it sees at all times. Which is wonderful for peace of mind, if nothing else. Also, let's talk about performance. I talked about CPU usage before, and that sort of performance, but let's talk about the actual impact on the performance of your game as you're recording. Well, OBS seems to have, for me at least, an extremely minor impact on performance. Whereas Fraps does not. Despite the fact that Fraps uses about the same CPU as OBS, I do have a problem with, with, how, with how Fraps seems to interact with games. So let me actually drag Fraps over here. Um, there is actually an option in Fraps called Lock Frame Rate While Recording, which I have always had off, of course. However, for some reason, and this might be just specific to me, so I'm not guaranteeing that this is a widespread thing, but at least for me, it seems to almost act as if Lock Frame Rate While Recording is on at all times. I mean, I'll be playing a game, like when I was playing The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, for example, and doing the test recordings, I was typically getting about 70 FPS, Maybe like 65 at the least. And when I start recording with OBS, it really doesn't impact that FPS at all. But, when I record with Fraps, it tends to just go straight down to 30. To my target frame rate. I'm recording at 30 and it tends to just dip my frame rate also down to 30. It kind of like, when I first start recording, it'll kind of hover around like 60 or something. But then it usually just ends up plummeting to 30. And then it just stays there even if I'm getting well over 60. I don't know why, it's almost acting kind of like... V-Sync? Sort of? It's weird. But yeah, Fraps, despite the low CPU usage, tends to tank my performance, whereas OBS does not. Although, your results may vary. Now, let's talk about how often these programs are updated. OBS is updated very frequently. They're adding new features and bug fixes and all sorts of stuff all the time. However, Fraps, not so much. In fact, as of this recording, on the 1st of November 2014, the last time Fraps was updated was about a year and a half ago. It was last updated in February of 2013. Which, for software that costs money, is a little bit worrying. And the last thing I want to mention is the price. OBS is, well, free. Which, which is really awesome. So, in summary... 
OBS is, on its own, a very good piece of software for making high-quality local recordings of games. And when compared to Fraps, it has similar CPU usage, it has slightly lower quality, but that quality difference will become indistinguishable once you compress your video to send it off to YouTube or wherever you're going to send it. It has vastly smaller file sizes. It's much more adaptable and reliable when it comes to recording games. It doesn't impact my performance nearly as much as Fraps does. And it's also completely free. So, I hope you found this video informative, and thank you for watching.